If you're a filmmaker and you own a camera, you should be shooting stock footage. What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're talking about, in my opinion, the easiest way to make money with filmmaking. Now if you're new to my channel, feel free to like and subscribe. Let's get started. And another part is a lot of people don't talk about their earnings or what they make or what's it like, but I'm gonna show you what I make today. Okay, so this will probably not cover your full-time job. But I have never been in a conversation with anyone who I said, would you like an extra $500 a month just for a little bit of work and just let it sit and you just collect 500 bucks a month forever. And there's no conversation where they don't go, yeah, of course I'll take that. Ugh, coffee. Now a lot of people are hands off. They're full-time filmmakers and they won't sell stock footage. That's totally fine. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't have a good enough camera. I can't sell stock footage. Yes, you can. Um, if you own a camera, if you're a filmmaker, I'm assuming you own a camera, most of us do. Um, and with today's digital technology, cameras are getting smaller and they're getting cheaper. You should be uploading stock footage because it is the easiest way to make a little bit of extra income for your really expensive hobby. Yeah, I mean, these things aren't cheap. They're getting cheaper, but they're not cheap. So I have four sites pulled up right now. We have uh, Shutterstock. Adobe Stock, Pond5, and Storyblocks, also known as Videoblocks. Did I say four? I meant five sites. And uh, Videohive.net. Now, um, these are the five sites that I constantly upload to. We will talk about two other sites later on called F uh, Film Supply and Black Box, which I don't use as much. This has been my hobby for, I want to say, like the past two years, where I've just been uploading stock footage, um, just anything I could get my hands on. I, I mean, I'm always going somewhere, we're always filming, and I mean, the easiest example of stock footage that I've uploaded is one time we went to the grocery store and bought a bunch of vegetables, as you can see here on screen, and um, while they were being cooked for dinner that we ate, um, I filmed uh, the cooking and we I turned it into stock footage. There's a sale here, there's a sale here, and I made like 250 bucks in one night because somebody must have needed b-roll footage of cooking for some show and just like that I made money it's not a full-time income it's not gonna replace what I do full-time um, could it sure if you did it enough but for me it's supplementary income and it, it has been the easiest way to make money um, it's even easier than making money on YouTube by monetizing your videos I do okay on YouTube, it's definitely not a full-time income, but with YouTube's new restrictions nowadays, you need a lot of content just to start earning a little bit of money. Um, now stock footage, what's really great is it's not hard to get your portfolios approved and you can start uploading today. But you may say, Max, all I have is a DSLR, um, something simple, I don't know if the video footage that it produces can match the 4K quality that you know something like the Blackmagic production camera or GH5 or Sony cameras can do nowadays. No problem. All you have to do is upload pictures. Most DSLRs take really nice pictures and there's no reason you can't upload pictures of stock footage. The easiest example of uploading pictures is using the Contributor app by um, Shutterstock. All you gotta do is download Contributor, sign up for an account, and upload media from your phone. And if you have an iPhone, iPhone X, some of the latest Android phones, they take really nice pictures. And you can upload them directly from your phone with a Shutterstock app. And I have made money with still photos. Just saying. As you can see in my Shutterstock account for this month of October, I have $60 of unpaid earnings. For Adobe Stock, I have $56 of unpaid earnings. Pond5, I have 30 although I did get another sale yesterday for like another 30 so that should be 60 um, This story blocks, I don't think I've any, made anything this month. And um, this, I've made $40 on Video Hive. So that's 60 plus 110 plus, okay, 170 plus 40 is like 200, let's say 200, $230 so far this month, which 
It's only about halfway through the month, so I can assume that that number will double. So I'm looking at almost $500 this month in just stock footage. That's awesome. Oh my god, that's that's a good bit of money. That's that's like the cost of half half the cost of a lens, you know, something like that. Wow. And you know, only thing you got to worry about this stuff is just remember to do your taxes at the end of the year. Now, I recently invested in a better production camera back there for things like this, also more filmmaking stuff on the side that I run my business with and my other, you know, other production job. But stock footage is just one of the easiest things to do. The majority of my stock footage has been filmed in my apartment. I've, I don't really like necessarily going places. It's not always about the big epic mountain shot that you need to get. I mean, there's very simple things that sell, which, you know, some people say has, have, has ruined um, the film game, but in my opinion, it's just the same thing as digital ruining, ruining film. You know, it's just a new evolution of how it's how it's made. Now, what's really funny is if you ask the question, what types of footage sells? So I have a clip here on Shutterstock that is one of my clips. It's just my cat chasing a laser. It's not cinematic. It doesn't look crazy, but this is something that you would see in a quick online YouTube commercial, and it can get licensed at 4K for $180. Now, after Shutterstock takes their percentage, I only make about $90 but I'm not gonna say no to $90. And this clip is sold before. Um, there's another clip of my cat jumping into a pile of puzzle pieces that we poured out. It's just another one of those little kitten clips that they run around. And if you own animals, you better be capitalizing on how cute they are. <laughs> now, another good example, um, like I said before, is Video Hive. I have over a thousand sales in Video Hive. And my lifetime earnings since starting this account in 2015 is around $12,000. So on this site, I only have 405 pieces of footage at a thousand sales over this many years. Now, simple math, if I tripled my number of, or pieces of content on this site, I would triple my sales. It's kind of a numbers game. Yes, quality clips are very important. You want to shoot good stuff, but you also want to have a good marketplace with a lot of different options for people to choose from. Now, a good example of good selling footage from my portfolio on this site is this picture right here. This, uh, this video of a squirrel. We were, I was with one of my buddies in a park and I had got my hands on a black magic camera and I, this was like a few years ago and it was like the first 4K camera I ever touched and I filmed a squirrel in Central Park. This random squirrel. No integrity, nothing, nothing at all. It's just, it's just a squirrel. And it sells all the time. I'm always getting like an email of this squirrel where I make like, it's only a $10 clip and I make like something like $6 after it sells. And it's been sold 23 times. It's just a squirrel. It's just, and it, you know, even the clip shakes a little bit in the beginning of the camera because I had a really crappy tripod and the camera, like I press the record button and it shakes the camera a little bit. But this whole middle bit is just this squirrel. Another fun example of footage that surprisingly sold well is this clip of pizza on my account it's we i was in my crappy brooklyn apartment and we had ordered pizza and i was like hold on let me get the camera and i just start panning across the pizza and it sold 22 times there's really nothing cinematic about it it's just it's just a solid clip that sells and it's really interesting like i said before it's not going to make you a millionaire but it's it's a breath of fresh air every time the pizza clip sells and my best-selling clip on this site, which has got 54 sales, doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, if you had a thousand clips and each one sells 20 times, that's a lot of sales. Um, is I was I had a monopod and a camera in New York City, and I quickly filmed the three train showing up to the station, and it's this. And you know, you may say like I'm not sure why stock footage. Like I don't ever use stock footage. I didn't realize stock footage was so important until I worked for a company that bought stock footage. I was like, we buy this stuff all the time while we're making videos. I should probably start selling this stuff and have other agencies buy my stuff. That's a really great solution. Now, I did have a filmmaking conversation with one of my good friends, very respectable guy, but he was like, I'm not into selling footage. I'm, I really don't want to sell my stuff. It's my artistic work. It's close to me which I completely understand. That makes total sense. It's your work. You don't want anybody else to touch it. You know, people ask me, do I want to rent my camera out? I'm like, I don't know. It's 
I don't really want to rent it. It's kind of mine. But two things. To create films, you need to create a stable income that allows you to continue doing it. Or you can put, you know, max out your credit cards like we know some famous directors have done in the past. Which is not a terrible thing, and you can get the work done that way. Um, but at the same time, I just showed you a clip of a squirrel. This squirrel means nothing. It's just a squirrel. I hold no cinematic integrity towards this clip. Sure, there's going to be stuff that I film that I don't want to sell, but this, this right here don't matter. It's just a squirrel doing squirrel stuff. Now, I want to talk about filmmakers that you see online that you may not expect selling stock footage. I'm sure you've been on YouTube and you've probably seen this video right here. It's called Fire and Ice. It is a wicked cool video of from Abandoned Visuals. This is a great YouTube channel. Check these guys out. They don't have a huge following, but they have some really good videos. And they're like shot on Helium 8K, red cameras, beautiful, and it's like a really cool commercial. I'll leave a link in the description where you can watch this video and a link to their channel because they have other cool videos. I'll tell you something that you don't know. See, as you can see here, here's another one of their videos of them going through the Redwood Forest. It's beautiful. If you watch this video on a color correct 8K monitor, it looks, or 4K monitor, it looks great, but look at this clip right here. Let me stop it. This clip, they film that, but they also sell that. So let me show you Film Supply. Film Supply is another great stock footage site that I am not a member or contributor to, and uh, they have some great filmmakers on this site that make a lot of good content. And at the very top of their filmmaker list is Abandoned Visuals. If you jump in, you can already see that pretty much the majority of Abandoned Visuals videos from YouTube are being sold as stock footage online. Um, they make these great videos and they slice up pieces of their video as stock footage and they sell it because it's filmed on some really high quality cinema cameras and why aren't they gonna sell that? So I just showed you that Lambo video, the fire and ice video, the one I was talking about right here. Lambo, car. Um, and here it is on the, 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 the film supply, the Italian sports car page where tons of the clips from that YouTube video are being sold as stock. Now if we go in and click on this clip, uh, if you're the, one of the clients buying it, I work for a church. Uh, we're gonna go on internal digital web, size of the organization, 500 people, license $200. Abandoned visuals can make a quick buck. This church can use a cool Lambo shop for some church video. I'm not sure why they'd want that, but they're gonna use it. And just like that. Um, yeah, so if you're very close to your footage, believe me, there are some wicked good filmmakers out there selling stock footage. Another site that I want to talk about is blackbox.com. Now, I've just signed up for this site. It's brand new. What's really cool about this site is that you can upload stock footage, and once you upload it here, it auto distributes to Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, Pond5, and Videoblocks for you, the four that I already use. So you upload in one place. This site takes a small percentage and it just puts your footage on four different sites to get more views. Now, once you upload footage to this site, you cannot upload it to anywhere else. It's a licensing thing. If you put footage on Blackbox, you only put it there, nowhere else. But what's really unique about Blackbox, let's say that you're a local New York person watching this video. I'm also a local New York person. You reach out to me, say, hey Max, I'd love to shoot with you sometime. I go, sure man, I love shooting with new people. And we go shoot some footage together and make this really cool stock library. We can upload our footage to Black Box and we can split the revenue. So I make 50% of the footage and you make 50% of the footage. We both earn 50% of the earnings with you know Black Box and the other companies taking their percentage out before we get our earnings. Yeah, they take their cut, whatever, but we still make money. And, or, you know, that's really cool. You can do revenue sharing with somebody else. Or if you hire a model and say, hey, I don't have the money to pay you to shoot, um, but if I'm gonna put the footage on the black box, and I'm gonna give you 25% of the earnings to be the model in this footage. And that's a great way to get somebody paid without having to pull money out of your own pocket. So there's a cool system built inside of this on doing that. I'm not gonna go over it today. Um, if you wanna know how that works, sure, let me know. Um, that's pretty much it. Now. Next step is once you're in loving stock footage, you need to upload it and classify it and do stuff like that. There's a little bit of groundwork, but it's pretty easy. So when I upload stock footage, ooh, there's my cat. So we're gonna go to 
story blocks to show the key, keywording kind of thing, and all the sites are pretty much the same. You add in keywords of the site. Same thing for Pond5. Here's a video of a woman cutting cucumbers, and you title it. You know, there is a way to upload the footage. It takes a little bit of work, and it's a little annoying sometimes because it's just very repetitive. But if you like filling out Excel spreadsheets, you'll be really good at this. And you upload your footage and get it online. Now, that's the legwork. You gotta film it and you gotta put it online. We gotta edit it as well. But I mean, most of you guys are probably editors by now. And um, there's minimal editing. You gotta clip, it's 15, 12 to 15 seconds long. You trim it, you export it. There's really no storytelling involved in that. It's just a clip. And you put it online. And once that happens, it's there. It's there forever. And you can start selling the footage which is wonderful. Ah, and here it is. So once you're into Shutterstock or something like that, you click on the piece of footage, um, you gotta put in the keywords. What's great about Shutterstock is they have a keyword suggestion tool that, you know, you can open the, the suggestion tool up. I am giving you a slight tutorial. I hope this helps. And let's say cutting cucumber. Probably can't spell that right. Oh, these are very similar. I click on these. Okay, and I get my keywords, um, and I add all these keywords because, I mean, keywording is not my thing. And copy to clipboard. I've copied that, and I will paste it here. I will find this clip, and I will paste the keywords. And you can do multiple selections, by the way. You don't have to do one at a time. I, you know, if a bunch of clips are very similar. You can use the same keywords. Um, same thing here. Paste the keywords, and then go into here. There's the cucumber. It's it's in here somewhere. Oh, let's show more per page. Fifty per page. There it is. And then uh, keywords. And yeah, I copy and paste the keywords across the four sites very quickly and I categorize it on each the site, the specifics that it needs, and it really doesn't take me a long time to upload footage. Now, I have learned that if you take very diverse clips, like mountains, city, river, you have to individually do those. But if I have a whole session of just cutting vegetables, most of those keywords are gonna stay the same. I can pretty much copy and paste those to each clip and it's fine. The titles will be small variations because you know it's cucumber, this one's an onion, that one's uh, carrots. I have to change it up a little bit, but it saves me a lot of time by you know just shooting a certain thing and doing small bits and pieces. And I probably upload 50 new clips every week. So that is stock footage in a nutshell and why you should be doing it. It's so easy. I mean, and it's easy supplementary income, and this is what you have to look forward to the future. So, in my Shutterstock portfolio, I have 960 clips, and my all-time earnings since I started, which was about a year and a half ago, was 2,200 bucks. Not bad. I'm not full-time living, but I mean, who's gonna say no to that? That paid for that paid for this camera right here, right? Paid for the camera that made most of the footage. Now. If we go to Shutterstock.com and go to footage, and typically a really popular clip is going to be like the first one you see. Um, people, this clip looks pretty good. Happy couple. I've actually had to buy this clip before for work. Which is surprising. <laughs> buy this guy. He looks pretty serious. He has 56,000 clips. Now, I have, let's say, a thousand clips. I've made $2,200 in two years, give or take uh, you know, six months. 56,000 times 2,200 divided by 960. So if I would have had 56,000 clips online, according to the money that I've made with the number of clips that I have online for my Shutterstock account, if I would have had 56,000 clips online in the past two years, I would have made $128,000. That's when stock footage becomes full-time, when you have a lot of clips online. And that was it. That's that's stock footage in a nutshell, guys. I mean, I don't know really what else to say. Is if you have a camera, you should be shooting stock footage, whether it be stills, anything. You don't need a really fancy red camera. I just got this thing. I haven't had it that long since I've posted this video, and the majority of my stock footage was shot on DSLRs, and as soon as I got a GH5, which was like what, a year and a half ago, I started shooting on that. 
Like, I started out with absolutely nothing. I filmed crap stock footage, and it taught me a lot, and I've gotten a lot better, and I've made decent money off of it so far. Am I the best out there online? Nah. But I'm damn well trying to get better. I hope this video has helped you. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight, a little bit of inspiration to go out and shoot your own stock. It's a fun game to get into, and like I said before in the video, if you're a local New Yorker, in the area, reach out to me. We can go film. It's not a big deal. I like meeting new people. I'm okay with that. And I hope you've enjoyed my cat. That's his favorite box. He's a stock footage star. Stock footage star right here. Sleepy Kitty. You saw him before. He's wonderful. That's why we have pets. Turn him into stock footage. Not a big deal. Now, if you're curious about all these different sites that I talked about, I will leave links down in the description to everything I have talked about. Every site, every resource, articles on stock footage and how you can make money, stuff like that. I'm here to help. I want to teach. I want to be a part of the community and kind of give back in a way. I'm also on a filmmaking journey trying to grow and make myself better. And I've been doing this YouTube thing long enough now to enjoy sharing it with all of you guys. So thank you. As always, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you are new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. I like this YouTube thing. I'd love for you to join and tag along. And one thing before I go, I forgot to say peace like I always say in videos. So, peace.